All right. Well, today we're going to continue talking about some of the people that um, were part of the early church. Now, we spent the like before this series talking about the early church. What does that mean? The early church. What does that mean? Do y'all remember who the church is? Who's the church? God. No, God's not the church. Joe? The people. The people. The people. Just any person or there's certain people. People that have what? Claire? Believed in Jesus. That's right. People that have put their trust in Jesus to forgive them from sin and are following Jesus are the church. And so we know that Jesus commanded them to go and share the good news. And as they were doing that, and as more people were believing, the church got bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, today we're going to talk about Peter. Everyone say Peter. Peter. And yes, this is Peter, the follower of Jesus, one of the disciples. And Peter um, is who we're going to talk about today, but also another guy that has kind of a cool name. Are you ready to hear his name? Yes. Everyone say Corn. Corn. Elias. Cornelius. Say Cornelius. Cornelius. Say it again. Cornelius. Cornelius was his name. And Cornelius was an officer in the Roman army. Okay, so he was like a soldier. And he lived in a place called Caesarea. Say Caesarea. Caesarea. Say it fast. Caesarea. Caesarea. And so Cornelius lived in Caesarea. And he loved God so much, and he worshipped him, and he helped a lot of people, and he spent a lot of time praying. And when God looked down on Cornelius, he was pleased with him. And one afternoon, Cornelius saw something unusual. Cornelius saw an angel. If you saw an angel, what would you do? I probably think, is this real life? What? He saw an angel. And the angel of God came to him, not like, I guess, the Bible uses the word um, a vision, okay? And so he saw clearly in a vision, and I'm reading from Acts chapter 10. He says, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius. Everyone say Cornelius. Cornelius. And he stared at him in terror, which means that he was scared. And Cornelius said, what is it, Lord? If you're trying to find it, it's Acts. And Acts is in the New Testament. Love seeing your Bibles at church. Love seeing that. So Acts. So we say, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. If you know the New Testament, say it in your brain. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, in Acts chapter 10. And if you need assistance, Miss Raylan and Mr. Stephen can help you, okay? But I, it's good practice for you to learn how to find it, okay? So if you need help, you can just raise your hand and they'll come help you. And I'm going to keep talking, okay? About the ninth hour of the day, boys and girls, that's like 12 o'clock in the afternoon, lunchtime. He saw clearly in a vision an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius. What's his name? Cornelius. When you go home today and your parents say, what did you learn today? What are you going to tell them? I learned about Cornelius. Corn. Corn, eel, like an animal. Corn, eel, yes. And he stared at him in terror and said, what is it, Lord? Everyone say that with a scary face. What is it, Lord? And he said to him, your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa. Ooh, what place? Joppa. Joppa, Joppa. It's a place. I've never been to Joppa, Doug, but I think. That would be a cool place to go. Joppa. And he says, And now send men to Joppa and bring one Simon who is called what? Look in your Bible. Simon who is called? Claire? Peter. 
Peter, the disciple of Jesus. He is lodging with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. And so the angel told him to go find who? Peter. He told Cornelius, your prayers have been answered. Go send your men to find Peter. And where was Peter? It starts with the letter J in Joppa. He was in Joppa. And so Cornelius sent two of his servants and one of his soldiers to where? Joppa. Joppa. And so the next day, the servants and the soldiers were going to the city. And here's Peter. And Peter goes up to the top of the house where he's staying. And when he gets to the top of the house, Peter sees something also very unusual. And I need Miss Raylan and Mr. Stephen to come help me with this. All right. And Mr. Will, if you'll put up the picture. This is what Peter saw when he looked up. He saw something that looked like a sheet. Hold, hold here and here. All right. And inside of the sheet were animals of all kinds, reptiles, birds, all kinds of animals. So when I count to three, I want you to yell out any animal. Put one in your brain. Put one in your brain. One, two, three. <laughs> and so I'm going to pretend that I'm Peter down here. And Peter is on the top of the, the roof. And he looks up and he sees this thing that looks like a bed sheet. And on it were all these different animals. Fish, pigs, elephants. Look in the picture on the screen too. Bears. All kinds of animals, all right? And he says, get up, Peter. And so Peter gets up. He says, get up. I'm going to read to you from the Bible what he says next, okay? If you're following along, I'm going to go to verse 12, okay? In it were all kinds of animals and reptiles and birds of the air. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. So what was it that, what was it that he heard? Kill and eat. Well, Peter was kind of hungry. So the timing was just right because he was actually kind of getting hungry. But there was a problem, guys. Peter said, by no means, Lord, for I've never eaten anything that is common or unclean. What Peter was saying is, God, the way that our people have lived and what we've been taught is that some animals are considered unclean and we should not eat them. And then there are some animals that we are supposed to eat. We are allowed to eat. And that all had to do with their, their religious, you know, background and their, their faith. Okay. That they were told you can't eat these animals, but you can eat these animals. And so Peter's saying, I can't do that. And here's what God says, okay? This is what God says to him. And the voice came to him a second time. What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times. All right? So, Mr. Stephen and Miss, Miss Raylan, I want you to lift it three times. There's one, and then it happened again, and one more time. Very good. You can put it on the ground. Thank you so much. All right? It happened three times. If you were Peter, what would you think of this situation? What would you think if you saw a bunch of animals on a bed sheet coming down from heaven? You just think about it in your brain, what you might feel like. And so this happened three times, and then the entire thing that he was looking at went up to heaven. And Peter was trying to understand, what does this mean? Well, then guess who arrived at the gate down below the house? Who do you think showed up? Who? Not Jesus. Somebody was supposed to go find Peter. Doug? You got it. Everyone say corn. Corn. 
Corn Eel. Eel. Yes. Eel. Cornelius. Cornelius. It was Cornelius. His men arrived at the gate and they explained that Cornelius had a vision and that the angel told them to go find Peter. And so Peter went with them to Caesarea where Cornelius was. And when Peter got to Cornelius' house, he, he told Cornelius about everything that he saw in his vision. So they both had a vision. They were different. So Cornelius was just told to go fight, get Peter, but Peter's vision was the sheep with the animals. And, and he explained that the gospel is for everybody. There's not some people that can have the gospel and the good news and other people can't. Just like the animals on the sheet. Some animals they could eat because they were considered clean, but other animals on, on the sheet, they were considered unclean, so they weren't allowed to eat them. And that was a picture of God showing them that the gospel, the good news of Jesus, isn't for some people. It's for everybody. And so Peter, um, you know, is with Cornelius in his house, and he's telling him, you know, that the gospel is for everyone, that there are not some people that are better than other people, but God sent the good news to every person, all people. Everyone that believes in Jesus can have their sins forgiven. God doesn't say in the Bible, only if good people believe in Jesus. Or if you eat this. Or only if these people that eat meat. Yeah. Or only if these people that eat fish. Or these people that, you know, don't say bad words. Or these people that, you know, do this or that. He said, no, anyone who believes in the Lord Jesus will be saved, will be forgiven from their sin. So what's our word up today? The gospel is for all people. Word up. The gospel is for all people. And as Peter said this to Cornelius, the Holy Spirit, which is part of God, and the Holy Spirit is... Uh, what comes and lives with believers and helps them to, you know, have God's presence with them and make choices that are right, came and filled the people that heard the message. Not just Jews and Gentiles, because that was the big thing. Jews and Gentiles were different. And so the Jews could do this and the Gentiles could do this and vice versa. And so he, God was saying, don't let all these barriers, like Mr. Stephen said, keep you from sharing the good news because it's for everybody. And the Holy Spirit filled all of those that were there. And the Jewish believers that were listening, they were amazed at what had happened. And then Cornelius and his friends, they were baptized. And Peter stayed with them for just a little while. But the challenge for you today that I have and that I want you to talk about in your small group time is that the good news is for everybody, no matter who they are, what they've done, where they came from, the gospel's for everybody because in the early church, there, were, there was division, the Jews and the Gentiles and, you know, all the different rules and all of those things really kept people from hearing. And so through this story, we learned that the gospel's for everybody. And so in your small group time, that's what I want you to talk about as a group. Okay? Well, I'm going to say a prayer. And when I say amen, we'll play the Bible story video next. Okay? And then after that, we'll go to our, our groups. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for this reminder that the gospel is for every single person. There are not some people that are worthy of the gospel and others are not. But your message is for every boy, every girl, every man, every woman, for every age, adults and children and teenagers. It's for everyone. And I pray that you would help us to remember that we need to share the good news with anyone, no matter where they are, where they come from, what they've done. 
your message is for everybody. Thank you for a message. Thank you for Jesus, the message we get to tell about that Jesus died on the cross, was buried, came back to life for our sin. And I pray if there's a boy or girl listening today that's not asked you to forgive their sin, they don't know if they're going to go to heaven one day, that you would help them to make that decision so that they can know for sure that they will spend forever with you. Help us all to share the good news with those around us. In your name I pray, amen. Cornelius was an officer in the Roman army who lived in Caesarea. He and everyone in his house worshiped God. Cornelius helped other people and he always prayed to God. One afternoon, Cornelius saw an angel of God in a vision which frightened him. The angel said to him, God has heard your prayers and he has seen how you help others. Then the angel told Cornelius to send for a man named Peter, who was in the city of Joppa. So Cornelius sent two of his servants and one soldier to Joppa. The next day, as the servants and the soldier were nearing the city, Peter went up on the roof of the house to pray. Peter saw a vision of something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, and the sheet were all kinds of animals, reptiles, and birds. A voice said to him, Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. No, Lord, Peter said. I have never eaten anything that is unclean or not used for food. Again, a voice said to him, God has made these clean. Do not call them unclean. This happened three times, and then the whole thing was taken up into heaven. Peter tried to understand what the vision meant. Then Cornelius' men arrived at the gate. They explained that Cornelius had seen a vision, and an angel instructed him to send for Peter. So the next day, Peter went with the men to Caesarea. When Peter got to Cornelius' house, he explained to Cornelius that God does not consider some people to be better than others. God had sent good news to the Israelites. Jesus is the Lord of all. Peter said, everyone who believes in Jesus will have their sins forgiven. 
as Peter said this. The Holy Spirit came down on those who heard the message, not just the Jews, but the Gentiles or non-Jews too. The Jewish believers were amazed. Cornelius, his friends, and his relatives were baptized in the name of Jesus, and Peter stayed with them for a few days. God showed Peter that just as there is no clean or unclean food in Christ, there are no clean and unclean people. God calls believers to tell everyone the good news about Jesus, no matter who they are or where they come from. Jesus is the Lord of all.